The Thalon de Revel class is a class of seven multi-role offshore patrol vessels currently being procured by the Italian Navy. This class of ships is notable for featuring several interesting design elements, many of which stem from its origin and intended purpose. The Italian Navy at the start of the 2010s was a relatively large force, but many of its ships were relatively old and had been slated for decommissioning in the coming years. This included the four Soldati-class frigates and eight Minerva-class corvettes, which collectively made up a significant portion of the Navy's smaller surface combatants. Additionally, the two ships of the Durand de la Pen class, which made up half of the Navy's destroyers, were becoming obsolete in the air defense role due to the inadequacy of their older SM-1 missiles against modern threats. Back in the 1990s, the Italian Navy had intended to build six new air defense ships as a part of the multinational Horizon program, but long delays and cost overruns led to Italy only procuring two of the resulting Andrea Doria-class destroyers. What all of this means is that going into the 2010s, the Italian Navy faced both a deficiency in modern high-end air defense ships and an upcoming lack of low-end surface assets. The new Bergamini-class frigates would partially alleviate these deficiencies, but more ships would be needed to maintain the Navy's capabilities. Given unlimited funding, the Navy probably would have replaced a like for a like, ordering more frigates, new corvettes, and new destroyers. Of course, like any military, the Italian Navy does not have unlimited funding, and probably would not have been able to secure approval from the Parliament for so many new kinds of ships. Instead, the Navy would have to come up with a class of ship that would both fulfill their requirements and receive funding from the government. That class would be the Thalon de Revel class PPAs. The interesting features and specifications of the Thalon de Revel class reflect these challenges. The class is also referred to by the acronym PPA, or, and forgive my very bad Italian pronunciation here, Puttagliatore Polivolente di Altura, which means multi role offshore patrol vessel. I'll stick to referring to them as PPAs, since, as you can likely tell, I don't speak Italian. The PPAs are meant to be affordable, modular, multi-purpose vessels that can be used for duties such as escorting naval forces, supporting rescue operations, and participating in humanitarian aid missions. Funding for the PPAs was secured in 2014. Design and construction of the ships would be handled by the prolific Italian shipbuilding firm Fincantieri at their Mugiano and Riva Trigoso shipyards, as is the case for most modern Italian warships. Seven ships of the PPA type were financed, with an option for three more and an intent to potentially procure up to 16 vessels. These seven ships would be ordered and split into three different configurations. Two of them would follow the light configuration, three would be light plus, and two would be built to the full configuration. The differences between these versions lies entirely in their weapons and sensors, as they all have the same hull, structure, and propulsion system. The PPA Light and Light Plus will serve as replacements for the Minerva and Soldati class ships, while the PPA Full can complement the Andrea Doria class destroyers in the air defense role. Each PPA ship has a length of 143 meters and a beam of 26.5 meters. Their displacement varies based on configuration, going from around 5,380 tons full for the light and 6,270 tons full for the PPA full. For propulsion, the PPA has a combined diesel and gas drive system that gives them a top speed of around 31 knots and a range of 5,000 nautical miles at 15 knots. The standard crew size is 90 for the light and light plus and 120 for the full, though all of them can accommodate over 170 crew if need be. While weapons and sensors are where the different versions of the PPA stand apart, some systems are shared by all three configurations. Every PPA is equipped with a 127mm main gun at the bow and a 76mm gun above the helicopter hangar at the rear of the ship. 
The 76 is the latest version of the venerable Otto Malara 76 and is mounted in Leonardo's new Silver Ponte turret. This gun can be used as a close in weapon system for defense against anti ship missiles thanks to a targeting radar and guided shells. Every PPA is further equipped with two 25mm autocannons in remote mounts. For the PPA light, those various guns are the extent of their armament. The Light Plus and the Full, on the other hand, also possess two 8-cell Silver VLS for a total of 16 vertical launch missile cells. These cells will likely carry either the Aster-15 medium-range surface-to-air missile or the Aster-30 long-range surface-to-air missile. The PPAs may also be equipped with the CAM-ER medium-range surface-to-air missile. CAM-ER lacks some of the extreme performance of the Aster, but unlike Aster, it can be quad-packed with four missiles loaded per cell. CAM-ER is being procured by Italy under the name Albatross NG. Exclusive to the full configuration are two triple torpedo tubes, eight anti-ship missiles and box launchers mounted just forward of the superstructure. These would either be the current Tessio Mark IIA or the upcoming Tessio Mark IIe missile, as well as two decoy launchers. For sensors, the PPA light is equipped with the Leonardo actively scanned X-band four-panel radar, while the Light Plus swaps that out for a C-band system of a similar design. The full, on the other hand, has both X and C-band radar, as well as a variable depth sonar and towed sonar array. The PPA full's dual-band radar means that when equipped with the Aster 30 Block 1NT missiles, They'll be some of the first European ships capable of tracking and shooting down ballistic missiles on their own. It's worth noting that the design of the PPAs follows the fitted for but not with model, meaning that even though the Light and Light Plus ships lack the full equipment of the PPA full when launched, every ship of the class can be brought up to the full specification if need be without having to undergo major modification. All the systems present on the full can be installed on the lesser variants. For more information on the PPA's equipment, I suggest checking out the pages on navalanalysis.com and cforces.org, both of which are linked in the description of this video. Common to all PPAs is also a helicopter hangar, which can fit either two NH-90 helicopters or one AW-101, a ramp and side davits for rigid hull inflatable boats, and a 20-ton crane for lifting equipment or containers. Speaking of containers, the PPAs have room to carry up to 13 ISO 20-foot size shipping containers or containerized modules, five under the flight deck and eight amidship, which allows for the ship to be easily adapted for a variety of different duties. For example, a PPA can be turned into an offshore hospital, it can be used to transport humanitarian aid, or can be used to assist in cleaning up pollution. Beyond the provisions for containers, the design of the PPAs contains several other novel choices that make them interesting ships. One visually prominent element is the zigzag shape of their bow. Instead of having a standard or bulbous bow, the PPA has a lengthened bow section at the waterline, which then cuts back sharply just above it. The purpose of this design is to provide for greater speed and efficiency. Longer hulls are generally more hydrodynamically efficient than shorter hulls, but lengthening an entire ship also increases its weight. The PPA's lower rostrum lengthens the hull at the waterline, which means that the greater efficiency can be attained without adding on too much extra weight. Another unique element of the PPAs is the shape of their bridge. As seen from the exterior, the bridge is highly angular, coming to a sharp point at the center. Fincantieri describes the internal layout of the bridge as a naval cockpit. Now, the word cockpit was originally a nautical term, originating in the Age of Sail, but has long since become primarily associated with aircraft instead of ships. In the PPA, though, this term comes full circle, as the bridge features an aviation-inspired integrated control station with a pilot and co-pilot sitting side by side and controlling the ship via yokes and joysticks. The angular shape of the superstructure provides them with excellent visibility. 
The first ship of the class, Paolo Thawan de Ravel, was laid down on May 9, 2017, and launched in June 2019, as she was commissioned into service in March of 2022. Her namesake is Paolo Thawan de Ravel, an admiral who served in the Italian Navy during the First World War. The second PPA, Francesco Morosini, named after the 17th century Doge of Venice, was commissioned in May 2022. These first two ships are both of the light configuration. Three PPA Light Plus ships, Raimondo Montecuccioli, Marcantonio Colonna, and Ruggiero di Oria, as well as two PPA full ships, Giovanni delle Bande Nere, and the as of yet unnamed vessel, are currently under construction. So far, the PPAs have all been named after historical figures, with many of them named after the condottieri mercenaries from the Renaissance and early modern period. My personal take on these vessels is that they're very impressive designs. I did find them a bit awkward looking at first, mostly due to the zigzag bow and their very large superstructures, but their overall look has grown on me and I am a big fan of the very sci-fi-esque bridge layout. One could criticize the PPAs for being a bit underarmed relative to their size, but that's mostly a result of their intended roles. The PPA lightships are not really meant to be frontline combatants, and in any case, they can be brought up to the light plus or full specification in the future if funding is allotted for it. The PPA foes are still arguably a bit underarmed relative to some other ships of their size, the Japanese Akizuki and Asahi-class destroyers, for example, have 32 VLSLs instead of just 16, despite only having a slightly larger overall displacement, but this is because a fair bit of space aboard the PPAs is being left empty for those containerized modules. All in all, I think it's quite impressive that the Italian Navy and Fincantieri were capable of designing and launching a new class of ship within a relatively short span of time, especially when one looks at the problems that have plagued the new ship programs in other navies such as those of the United States, the UK, and Australia in recent years. As mentioned at the beginning of this video, the original order for the PPAs consisted of seven ships, with an option for three more and an intent of potentially up to 16. As of now, it seems that the class will be limited to just seven vessels, though more may be ordered in the coming years. It's likely that the Italian Navy asked for more ships than they expected to get as a precautionary measure in case the future destroyer, a DDX program, fell through. As a DDX program seems to be proceeding according to pace, and since Italy in 2019 signed on to be the lead coordinator of the European Patrol Corvette project, it seems unlikely that a full 16 PPAs will actually be built. However, considering that Fincantieri has been highly successful on the export market over the past decade, with their ships being procured by countries such as Egypt, Indonesia, Qatar, and even the United States through their American subsidiary Fincantieri Marinette Marine, it seems quite plausible that the PPA, or future designs based on it, will be made for other countries. It will be interesting to see if some features, such as the unique bow shape and bridge layout, make their way onto future Fincantieri ships. Whatever the future holds, it seems assured that the PPAs will serve their country for many years to come.